people, people that are interested in cats, the paranormal and things. I'm just going to do something first. No, it's not a complete unboxing video because I think people are getting a bit bored. Well, I've got this today. I haven't a clue what it is. Well, actually, I've got an idea. It's meant to be something for the cats and somebody actually gave me some money for the cats. I think it was last year and I kept hold of it. So I thought, right, I'll buy this for them. And if it's good, it's good. And if it's rubbish, yes, I will be telling Amazon how rubbish it is. So let's have a look. It's meant to be a self-heating pet mat. That's what I bought for my cats. Like I said, somebody donated some money. I've still got a little bit of money left over from the donation, believe it or not. I'm actually going to invest in new lights. I'm actually looking out for something a bit decent so everything gets a bit you know a bit better in here so anyway i'm going to open this and then we're going to see what the cats think of this and then i'll go on to something else <laughs> so get this open there's a bunch of things we need to move out of the way because we're actually going to be sorting out a load of junk in this house as well so let's see what this is like doesn't seem that big if it isn't i'll get them another so, move these all out of the way. Get some magazines and things to read from. And got it in grey. It's no good getting white because white doesn't say white. Because it's really weird chewing gum colour. But I thought, you know what, I'll get grey. So I got this. The cats are like, what the fudge? And then they're running off. Oh, actually, it's not too bad. Actually, that is really nice and fluffy. Look at that. So I'm gonna try and move these cats because they're all on a plastic bag. So I actually had a delivery today. Come on, you lot, go on, mush. Just move this box out of the way. That box is getting disposed of. And toys. Let's see if I can... Right, yeah, it's first day's not a cat thing today. It's just this came and I thought, Do you know what, I'll open it now. Come on, you lot. And the thing is the weather is horrible. Come on. I know you want to stay in the plastic bag, but this is getting rid of big style. Come on, move your bum bum. Good boy. Turn. I know you want to be on the plastic bag, but I've got this. This is fluffy. Come on. Oh, yes. Look at that. Get on that. If you can see what I'm doing. There we go. Let's see what they think. Oh, Terrin's trying it. No, Yoshi, no saving the box. Oh, what's that feel like? Do you know what? I may actually get another one of these. I don't like how high up it is. So I'm going to actually move this down. Eh, I've just knocked the light out. Don't save stuff. I've actually thrown a load of junk out. Let's pull this over a bit, guys. Yes, I actually got off the bed for once. Let's pull this over so it's not on a dip. They're not too sure about it, but it does look really nice and fluffy, that. I do like the feel of that. It's really nice. Go back around again. See, somebody's in that. I think it might be Shadow in there. And the one there, that's Yoshi. Turn this around. Yep, that's a dressing gown, believe it or not. Keeps me warm. I don't wear the traditional granny's ones. Do not like it. <sighs> that's meant to be self-heating as well. This uh, this fluffy thing here. Yes, I know. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to nick it. So I'll just see if the cats will gather on it and see how it goes. In the meantime, back to the video. And we're back. Right, I'm going to read a few stories out of this. I do have some older ones because I do like my ghost stories and stuff like that. And I've been reading spiritual magazines, I've got books, obviously I listen to on audio, I listen to on YouTube, I listen to on other things. And yeah, I enjoy a good, a good story, whether it's, you know, the paranormal and... There's loads and loads. I could be sat there for ages listening and talking about it. So I'm going to read a story. 
and I'm not going to say from, I'll just say the magazine is from Take a Break, Fate and Fortune. And believe it or not, the magazines, they are really, really good. I've been buying them for absolute years. There's other magazines and books I read, but that's one of them. They did have Chat It's Fate. And I really enjoyed watch, uh, watching it, reading it, but I think it's been discontinued. I'm not too sure. It's it's like, I don't know, anything that's good, they get rid of. Which, I suppose the price of things like that are expensive. But then they don't make it that much cheaper when you buy them online. And sometimes you want the copy right there. And sometimes, oh, you want to store it for later. And obviously, it's not always the same. You, Store it all up on your phone. No. <laughs> After I've read a magazine, if I don't want to keep it, I get rid of. Unless I find something really, really interesting to keep hold of. And I do have older ones. It's just finding them. Oh, I know I'm full of junk behind me, so I'm going to be ripping up a load of rubbish and putting it all into a box. That's why the box has been moved, because it's getting ripped up later. So this one is saying... I'm not saying who the name of the pe uh, person is, but it says, who are you talking to, mum? And the story goes, I'm taking my glasses off, but I have new glasses coming next week, so I don't need to do this anymore. It's like, yes, I can't wait. Yeah, I'm getting them. I'm getting them. So, anyway, it says, as I gently lowered her into a seat, my mum, Marie, grimaced. Months earlier, she'd given a howl of pain when she slipped on wet grass outside our house in Ganston, Tennessee. Sliding down the slope, she'd hit them, laying still. Wrapped in agony, she said, I can't get up. An ambulance had been called to take Mum to the hospital, where a scan showed she'd broken her ankle in three places. So would that be in England, Ireland and Scotland? That's three places. Uh, anyway, but the bones had failed to heal properly. Yes, I've heard of people that have experienced that. Not good. And now without, now she could barely move without wincing heavily in discomfort. Yeah, it's not nice. Mum had diabetes and was overweight. So the problem with her ankle totally floored her. Will you stop arguing? This is to share. No arguing about the mat. No. Yoshi. No. Good boy. Yoshi. He doesn't want that. Yoshi. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. If you annoy him, he will hit you. He will. He'll give you a crack. He will give you a little slap. He'll say, no, stop. No, oh, I give up. Anyway, where we start? Ah, here we go. It says, Mum already had diabetes and was overweight. So the problem with her ankle totally floored her. Um, one night I was walking by the sound of her voice in the front room. Groggily, I looked at my, at my clock. It was 1am. I listened more closely and realised I could hear more than one voice. Excuse me. No. Who on earth was she talking to? Or what was she watching? TV? Not at this time of the night, surely. I sat up in bed. Mum's voice was followed by another voice mumbling and whispering. It was too low for me to make out that make out what it was saying. I got out of bed, found my slippers, and went into the front room. Mum was on the couch. The TV was switched off. There was nobody else in the room. Who were you talking to? I asked, perplexed. I'm talking to my mum, she said matter-of-factly. My mother, Pearl, had died seven years earlier in this house in her in her 70s. We'd all shared the house since I'd been a young boy. My father had left when I was little. She just appeared suddenly, said mum. She said everything is going to be all right and I'm going to see her real soon. I looked around, baffled. Had Mum imagined it? But no, I definitely heard another voice alongside Mum's. Yet nobody else was here. 
Five days later, mum was in dreadful pain again. So I took her to the doctor. After examining her, he said, I'm afraid there's nothing more we can do. Mum's face fell in despair and we made our way home. Pushing open the door, I held onto it and she hobbled into the front room. But as she reached the sofa and began to sit, she toppled from my grasp. In horror, I watched as she slid onto the floor. Quickly bending down towards her, it was too late. Mum was dead. She'd suffered a stroke. She was only 56. Yeah, that is pretty young. 56 is pretty young. In my grief, I remembered how days earlier, Pearl had appeared to her and said she'd see her soon. Had my grandma come to foretell her daughter of her imminent death? The idea scared me and I later moved out of the house despite all its happy memories. I tried to tell myself that mum is free of the agonising pain which dominated her final months. And I hope the widespread, I hope the whispered words that night have come true and they are now reunited. So yeah, that's actually a pretty cool story. Her mum had come and seen her before she was passing. Sometimes I've heard that people will see loved ones when they're ready to go. So yeah, pretty cool. See if there's any other stories to carry on with. Some I do I, like I said I've been reading these magazines for absolute years, but some of the little stories are a bit small. I've got one here. It says "With love from heaven." Sounds pretty cool story. Like I said, any stories you want to find like this, you can find them on Take a Break. It's fate. And yeah, it's a pretty cool magazine. They are a bit pricey. I mean, I used to buy these at, I don't know, 50p at one point. These are now £2.40. So it's gradually gone up quite a bit. So I do know, I suppose it does work out cheap if you get it on subscription. So again, it's up to you and you can either buy it physical uh, media or you can read it online so that's up to you really right oh sure my nose is starting to run i don't know where to but it's going somewhere i'll read another story it says after a terrible family tragedy something extraordinary appeared in the wedding photos but and i'm not going to say who it's by but yeah let's see and as you can tell, some of these stories are like from all over the world. They're not specified for the UK only, which is better. <laughs> anyway, it says, walking into the pantry, I burst into giggles. You get locked up for stuff like that, you know. Anyway, sitting on the floor, her face covered in chocolate spread was my 15-month-old Tadian, or Totty, as everyone knew her. Tell her, she giggled. The name for a favourite Nutella, which she was busily, busy eating by a spoonful. Oh, it's horrible stuff if you don't like Nutella. She was so mischievous, but with that beautiful smile, I could never be annoyed. When Totty was born, she had melted our hearts straight away. I loved sunflowers, so I'd bought her clothes and blankets with yellow flowers on. Her sisters, Paint and Eleven, and three-year-old Haven, were excited about having another sister and fought over helping me change her nappies and bathe her. Yep, that's what happens when you've got a house full of other kids. They all squabble over who's going to be adopted parent. I had that. Sometimes it's funny and then when they get older, it's like, no, you do it. <laughs> my son, Lakin, five, was disappointed when my fiance, Cecil, and I first broke the news. He wanted a brother. But when she came home, he was obsessed with her, showering her with kisses and cuddles. She fitted into our family and completed it. From the moment she took her first steps at 13 months, nothing or no one could stop her, as well as being a Nutella fan. Oh dear. Totty also loved dancing, and we would jump around at the kitchen together. In summer, we'd pile into our garden and the kids would run around. We'd have an inflatable jacuzzi, 
Pets Bar on the patio, which the older ones would splash about in. Luckily, Totty was too young and couldn't climb up the sides to get in herself. Then one morning I woke up feeling ill. I was on the verge of calling in sick for my shift at the airport cafe, but not wanting to let my workmates down, I decided to go. That's called dedication. Not many people are actually like that anymore. Cecil gave me a lift, and as he pulled up to the airport, Totty cried, not wanting me to leave. Mummy, will you see? We'll see you this afternoon, sweetheart. I said, giving her a kiss. But just an hour later, my phone rang. It was Peyton. Totty's been pulled out of the spa. She's unresponsive, she said. Sounding frantic. You need to get home. What? I cried, unable to take in, to take the words in. I'm coming now. By the time I arrived, my baby girl was in the back of an ambulance. I held her hand as we spread towards the hospital. Just as we arrived, Totty went into cardiac arrest. No, I cried as I watched the doctors working on my baby. I fainted. When I came round, Cecil was by my side. They've stabilised her, he said gently. But that night she deteriorated fast and had to be revived twice more. Next morning the doctor broke the news that she didn't have long left. It's about making sure her last moments are comfortable, she said softly. Minutes later my beautiful girl passed away in my arms. She was 17 months old. No parent should have, see, have to see their child die. The pain was indescribable. The only silver of comfort was that had been there for her last, for her first and last breath. She'll be safe with my dad, I said to Cecil, both of us in tears. He passed away when I was eight. Afterwards, I learned what had happened that awful day. Cecil and Ronan were running around the house trying to find Totty when the kids saw her in the hot tub. There had been no screaming or crying. She had just climbed onto a chair and gone into the spa before drowning. We'd had no idea she could get inside. It was a tragic accident, but I couldn't help feeling guilty. I should have been home, not at work, I cried. It's not your fault, Cecil said. Afterwards, I was dazed with grief, but I had to keep going. For the sake of my other children, my friend Alice started a GoFundMe to give Totty a send-off, fit for a princess, and we were overwhelmed with donations topped to 7,000. During the service, we played her favourite song, Thank God, by Kane Brown, and gave everyone packets of sunflower seeds in her honour. I got up to give an ecology but it was incredibly hard. You were my sunshine in our lives, Tadian, I said. We will always love you and miss you immensely. This isn't goodbye, though. This is, I'll see you soon. A month later, I turned to Cecil. I'd like to have the same surname as you and the kids, I said. We fixed the wedding date for the 22nd of December, three months away after Totty had passed. The number 22 held special meaning for us, as it was the date Totty was born. I was devastated she wouldn't be there, but I, we were honoured her life throughout, sorry, <clears throat> but we honoured her life throughout the day. We had a beautiful A3 picture of her, and she had her own seat allocated and a bouquet done for her. Our eldest daughter walked down the aisle with her ashes in a beautiful yellow butterfly-shaped urn I'd managed to find, and some of them were also put in mine and my husband's ring. We brought along our new puppy, Teller, named after Totty's favourite, Fred. A week later, I was lying in bed when my friend sent me a screenshot of one of our wedding photos. In the foreground, my groom and I were posing in a sweet embrace. However,
However, in the corner, she circled what looked like a small figure by a tree and typed, your baby girl was at your wedding today after all. As I peered closer, I got a chill right through me. There, without a doubt, in my mind was a ghostly apparition, a little girl in pigtails, and it looked as if she was pointing at us. I knew it was my beloved daughter, Poppy. She wouldn't have missed our wedding for the world. I ran out of the room to show Cecil. Look, it's our Poppy, watching on from behind a tree in a white dress, I said. A sister, Hazen, had worn a white dress, so Poppy would have definitely worn the same. We both had huge pumps since then. We have had other times too that Poppy is never far away. Me, Leighton and the girl see yellow butterflies all the time, always yellow. I've looked to see where the a place on my wall. Recently I uploaded a video of it on TikTok showing Totti's ephoral outline and it was seen more than 1.4 million times. I was contacted by other parents who have also lost children who said it had given them hope that their children were still around. When a child passes it is a different level of grief but I believe that they are never that they never truly leave us. So that's actually a really lovely story. Fair enough, it was tr very, very tragic, especially when you lose a child, but also that you know that the child was there in spirit and in like a ghostly form to witness her parents getting married, which I think was pretty cool. So this is why I read these magazines. They are some of the stories that they tell you some of them are they are pretty different so i do have i do have local stories i don't know whether to read them because i read some ages ago and some of the words i mean i get tongue-tied on words and it just really annoys me so i can try and we'll see how it goes I can't remember if I've read all the stories in here because I've read a few. But it's like, ew. So I'll have to remember whether I've read these stories before or not. I should have actually marked them, but me <laughs> forgets like a right gaff spanner. So this one, these are in Failsworth, believe it or not. Up a mill, Huddersfield Road. Oh, yeah, the Carrion Crow, which is shut down now. Uh, I think it has anyway. Um, we'll read this one. And it's called The Chat Room at the Church in Church Lane, Upper Mill, Saddleworth. And it's from the book called The Ghosts of Oldham and Saddleworth, Local Haunts. Haunts, sorry. Got a gaff spanner. Local Haunt by Christian Whitehead. So, nice book. Obviously, they've got all the added to make it look older, the book. I'll read this story. My hand's playing up again. Oh, right, where are we up to? It says, in an area sparsely populated by evidently the hubbub of village life in the past, with the splendour of St Chad's Parish Church set next to... Next door, high within the hills of Saddleworth, the church inn commands spectacular views of the surrounding countryside. No wonder a certain 
Mr. John Andrew, a local huntsman, decided in 1827 to build the new inn, as the church was originally called. A substantial five-storey building resting in the hillside where it remains today. What a welcome it must have bestowed to those who lived far or near. The local wool workers within their family cottage industrious, blah, 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 industries. See, I hate it when I get tongue tied. The railway workers by whom woolen goods were transported probably via the Delft donkey or the imposing viaduct, bike, viaduct sorry, that heads up a mill. What can be more uplifting than the sight of a church tower by the sight of a pub? So I will show you the picture. I have to make sure that you're getting a good look of it because there's some pretty cool pictures. Whew, dearie. It says, if my conversations with Mr. Julian and Mrs. Christine Taylor, who own the church inn, are anything to go by, then I certainly believe it is the case that this beautiful part of Saddleworth could claim to be one of the most haunted pubs in Britain. I have never been anywhere that could boast so much activity inside and out. <sighs> Though the church inn might appear to be in the middle of nowhere, one cannot say it is isolated. At one time, it was on the main highway. Past photographs reveal it has very large adverts attached to its barn walls, devised, obviously, to attract the attention of what could only be many visitors and the many passing through. A warm and friendly atmosphere still pervades the vicinity, ameliorating any spookiness one might feel. Mr Taylor took on the church inn after it had been vacant for a spell. In need of a lick of paint, he duly got cracking with a paintbrush, deciding to sleep within the bar area after a hard day's work. From his vantage point, looking in the direction of the no smoking room, he could vaguely make out the smoky outline of something in its interior window. His pet dog, a Rottweiler, was going bananas. Being a down-to-earth bloke, he acknowledged he had no intruder and presumed that this to be a dust cover over his ladder. Only on walking, sorry, only on waking the morning after, he noticed his ladder on the other side of the pub and the dust sheet spread, supposed Manaclory ghost. Oh, dear me. She had been noticed at the top of Church Road by the crossroads. No, I've missed something. Why does that happen? It when you have a daft moment. On his awake in the moment after he noticed his ladder on the other side of the pub and the dust sheet spread, supposedly supposed ghost. She had been noticed at the top of Church Road by the crossroads. And I still missed something. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the words all merged together. It's weird. No, I have read it right. It's just it looked like I'd read read. Sorry, something wrong. Being a down-to-earth bloke, he acknowledged that he had no intruder and presumed this to be the dust cover neatly on the floor. So Mr. Taylor kept come across the grey lady who walks the lane nearby. Does she visit the pub too? A supposed melancholy ghost, she'd been noticed at the top of Church Road by the crossroads and round the gates of the churchyard, thereby passing the pub. 
A friend of mine, Edwin, a church organist, sadly passed on now, saw an attractive but pitiful looking girl glide down the aisle of the church whilst he was practising one afternoon. Could she be the self same ghost? As a long-standing ghost story, details have been lost or added or blurred, but the gist of her flight is that she is looking for her... Looking for her memory? Oh, hang on, that's just me. Looking for her long-lost love. Always the same, isn't it? Some say she fell under the wheels of a cart. Some that she threw herself at them. Some say it was all a tragic accident. Typical. But they're right. Do, things do get lost in tr uh, translation over the years and things get added. It's like Chinese whispers, I suppose. You'll start off with one word and at the end of the row, when there's a load of people, it will be a completely different one. She's frequently seen at all times of the day. But who is this poor lost soul? A dog now resides at the church inn, which enjoys curling up on the floor in its favourite spot on the edge of the tiles, in a place the staff call B area. A place, incidentally, where bodies were stored in the past if the ground of the churchyard was too hard. Do you know my head in my tree in? <laughs> for burials owing to cold weather. A little white mongrel, seen many times by customers and the family, loves to bound across the floor and jump up the chimney where it promptly disappears. The fireplaces in this pub are well established and no door has been removed to make way for them. I can only spectate, sorry, not spectate, speculate that maybe he is running towards the welcoming lap of a beloved individual who still warms himself by a fire. Cool. Oh, and the cats are all toasty on the new rug. Good. <laughs> Another hot spot of haunting interest is indeed outside one of the smallest rooms. The gents' toilet, the staff is amazed to see gentlemen in need to visit. Step sideways and round as if avoiding a hidden obstacle before they enter the doorway. When asked why they need to do this, they revealed that they are walking round a man stood close to the door, seen by someone, unseen by others. He is dressed in an overcoat and smokes a pipe, which is very rarely seen these days. And I'm talking about people smoking pipes. <laughs> Presumably, he would be very noticeable these days. Curiously, a little boy mentioned this mentioned that this man resembles someone not too old whom he saw a great deal he used to smile and play with him whom he and his mum called george could george be a person that mrs taylor would see preferably sometimes sitting at the bar as she walked out the kitchen could he be the one whom she takes takes at times to be family members who have Returned home sooner than expected. Strangely, a family friend could only draw this person by keeping them in the corner of their eye. The drawing is very like whom she can sense sideways on, in what staff call A area. Very original. People have noticed in their professional peripheral vision someone sitting on a bench at a table in this area regular customers witnessed someone else walk through a wall once again are these one and the same spirit the converted barn now housing the cozy dining room seems to be the space where most of the paranormal activity takes place. Frequently, children's voices are heard. The hoover clicks off 
not from the plug, but from the on and off switch, where nobody could possibly have been near it at the time. And items tidied away returned to the tables mysteriously. A visitor to the pub sensed lots of children who were tickling her and running their hands round her skirts in a mischievous way. At one point, children from the local refuge, a workhouse higher up the hill, were employed at the pub. Have these remained at the place where they knew happiness and fun? As the night for one of my interviews with Mrs Taylor drew in and the living departed from their homes, I became very aware that the departed had chosen to come in. I could sense the gately, the laughter, the gossip, the camarade, the friendship and the overall excitement that must have existed from days gone by. It really enhanced the history of the pub. Mrs Taylor says that even when she is alone in the pub, she knows that someone or something is present and that the experience is far from frightening. She always feels safe, secure and content. At this unearthly gathering, I strongly picked up on the presence of a wonderfully victorious girl. I hope she is the grey lady reliving her happier times. We've had a few happenings in this house recently, but as people understand is in the spirit world things are not consistent and all the time they will happen over time or when they feel like it when you least expect it like for the time when simon came home for work and the downstairs door had opened by itself and closed i was upstairs i wasn't anywhere near it and he walked through and it was like, did you just come downstairs? I'm like, no. Why would I go downstairs, open the door and close it? It just doesn't make any sense. So, yeah, we've had that. And um, I'd actually, in fact, to back that up, I was actually, I'd actually fell asleep on the bed. And I'd woke up, the room was freezing and... Somehow, the window had opened itself and it was wide open. So, what had happened? I don't know, because I was asleep. But I do have days where I'm extremely tired and I am trying to sort my sleeping pattern out. So, it's not always good. But I'm trying to get, get a hold of it because I want a decent sleeping pattern. It's not easy because I've always had really bad sleeping and waking hours. So, I'm trying to sort it out. Trying is a very hard word. <laughs> but there you go. Yeah, I'm sorry my stories get a bit stuttery, but I do get tongue-tied a lot. I'll sit there and it'll be like, blah, 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 blah. And I'll be like, I know the word. Why can't I say it? It's one of them, I suppose. I'm not going to complain about it. It happens. We are just... Staying in while the weather's bad because we've had snow and even though other countries manage better, this country is just like it goes to a flipping standstill. I don't know why. They knew we were having bad weather, but would they go and sort it out? No. <laughs> Too much hard work. <laughs> anyway, I know I've just dribbled on just talking and reading stories, but... That's what I'm going to do until the weather gets better and we can go places. I may have the odd unboxing of snacks and stuff like that and other mysterious things. And obviously I've got my creatures on Monday. I'm going to try and calm down a little bit with some of the unboxings because I think people just get bored with them. I'm not too sure. You know, I'm no expert in animals. I wish I was, but I'm not. I'm just learning it just as much as everybody else. When it comes to the paranormal... Again, it's learning. All I do is learn. I read, I listen, I interact with people. I'm no expert in that. All I can do is interact and... Yeah. But 
now something for you out there. Tell me any of your stories. Would you like me to read it out for you? Let me know. If you don't want to put it down in the comments down below, send it to my email, which should be in the description down below. So if you've got a story you want me to read out for you, then yeah, let me know. If you don't want me to say who it's by, I won't say who it's by or who it's from. So don't worry about it. I'll just read it out anyway and just say it's anonymous. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share and subscribe and thank you for watching. Bye. Also, I've got a little bit of an added extra. I was wondering, it's a bit hard to do this, because I was just going to put my camera away and I thought, you know what? Would you like me to do a an Amazon thing where people can decide what they want to buy? And I can put the list down below, a wish list, that's the one. If you wouldn't mind, if you want to do that, that is fine. Because then I can put down what would be good to send for maybe my cats or other creatures. Or for myself. It's, it's up to you. You're not obliged to have to buy something, but it's just another option. Because sometimes people don't want to be stuck into a sort of commitment of paying for a subscription because they feel they have to keep to it every month. And sometimes people don't want to do that. Or sometimes you can do both. Why not? So, yeah, let me down. Let me know down in the description whether you would like me to do that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.